back to my channel. I'm Kichi Bay or Sam, whatever you want to call me. And I'm an artist preparing for my first solo show. I am doing a solo show in Kentucky in November, and it's about self love, self respect, treating myself with kindness. Uh, it was inspired after a really bad breakup, series of bad breakups, and I've just uh, made a whole show about my healing process and my self-love journey and here's some of the pieces behind me that are going to be in the show i'm building my own frames for my paintings i'm exploring new styles that cater to like my inner child and every month i do a studio vlog kind of showing you the behind the scenes of all of that and this is this is june studio vlog so i hope you i hope you enjoy so this month I spent a lot of time actually painting. If you watched last month's video, I spent more time building frames for my paintings. It's something I've never done and wanted to try, so like I bought all the equipment. I tried, failed, tried, succeeded. And this month I had to fix some mistakes, so this one behind me, this portrait, that frame I actually made too small, which stunk really bad, but I didn't want to scrap the wood because it's expensive and I don't want to have to remake all the cuts and glue everything so maybe this took equally as much work I don't know but I cut the frame in half like I took it under my miter saw and just cut it in half and I found slivers of wood that I have like I have like a pile of like small scrap wood and I just ended up sanding that down wood gluing it to the frame and kind of like Frankensteining it back together and it I mean, it works. You can't tell from there, but up close you can see where where it uh, where the wood went in. And for next time, well, hopefully there's no next time. Hopefully I get my measurements right on next time, and I don't have to do this. But if there is a next time, now I know how to do it. So that was that was part of this month's goal, and got it. I just left my part-time job in my hometown and it was a doozy. When I went into this job, people were telling me to just stay out of a certain person's way and I would be fine. They have a terrible way of communicating and they're very condescending and just like ugly when they talk. They're, they're not very nice. And if it tells you anything, eight employees have quit in the last four weeks. Eight. Eight employees which is insane so I won't go too far into detail but like there is no way I'm letting anyone speak to me disrespectfully and I can go into work unbothered but like when someone is just like rude to you consistently and just like day by day by day has nothing nice to say that's what I'm like all right there are too many other ways for me to spend my time and being belittled by this person is not one of those ways that I'm going to spend my time. No. But I still have my part-time job in uh, this event space where I like bartend weddings sometimes, so that's, that's good. And everyone I work with there is a delight, so very nice. I've been working on my pop-up, my gallery and cocktail pop-up. It is... The first event is the 27th of this month, so if you're in Kentucky, you should slide through. I'll put the information in the description. And I'm super excited. I have eight Kentucky artists showcasing work for this group show that I curated. It's called Home Sweet Home, and it's to pay homage to Kentucky and how stinking beautiful it is. Like, my lens of Kentucky when I was growing up and I was a military kid, so I only spent high school in Kentucky, so four years in Kentucky. Oh, this place was boring as hell. There's nothing to do. I just, I hated it here when I was a kid. But now that I'm back after traveling for the last 10 years and being in like high volume cities, I love Kentucky. I love it so much. I love walking outside and <laughs> there's like deer outside, people have their chickens running around everywhere and their dog. There's no high rises, I can actually see the sky, the sunsets and sunrises here are insane. We also have crazy thunderstorms and lightning storms, I, I'm gonna go off on a tangent, I love Kentucky. And so, because I have this newfound love, I wanted to pay homage by curating this group show. And so, yeah, eight artists are gonna be there showcasing their work for this concept and I also made a cocktail for it 
my dream is to have my own gallery and I want to have the art side of it be pure as in I don't want artists to come in and have to like hike up their the prices of their work because in traditional galleries they take up to 50% commission every time a piece is sold so let's say I sell one of my pieces for let's just say hypothetically like $5,000 potentially galleries can take 2500 of it and that's so crazy it's just a lot of money you know me thinking about pricing my work just in general ruins the lens that I have on painting like I I'm happy enough to express myself by painting. And the concept of my solo show is so, I don't wanna say special, but it's just like, it's something that like I need to do. And thinking about pricing ruins it. So whenever I open my gallery, I don't want other artists to feel that way. So the one thing that I've been doing for the last 10 years is bartending and I'm good at it and I know what I'm doing and I think that Having a dual gallery slash bar, maybe slash cafe, is a great way to supplement income for the gallery so that I don't have to rely on artists selling their work. We can truly just showcase our work, and if it sells, the artist keeps 100% commission, and we just don't have to worry about that. Art is pure, and art is beautiful, and it's subjective, and I just, I hate that we live in a world where we have to constantly cater to like algorithm, Instagram, all these things for people to see our work, people to buy our work, people to whatever. I just, I want to get rid of that, kick that away. I just want to paint because I love to paint and because painting makes me freaking happy, okay? So yeah, anyway, got off, got off topic. I made a cocktail for the pop-up and it is so delicious. I don't know if it's just me because I made it in placebo or whatever, but I think it tastes so good. It is a soju cocktail that I wanted to be inspired off of those Yakult little probiotic drinks. If you know, you know, like in my house growing up, I would just, I would get in trouble because I would drink so many of them in one sitting. I would get in so much trouble. And I wanted to have that same like mouthfeel, texture, whatever. And so I took soju. I... I uh, infused it with strawberries and then I did a milk wash and clarified it. And so I thought the clarification process, the milk washing process, would give it that similar mouthfeel to the Yakult's and it kind of did. I, uh, I think it tastes great. I also made ginseng bitters to go with it. Uh, if you don't know what bitters are, they're just like a highly concentrated spirit that's infused with different spices and uh, different spices, roots and herbs and all this stuff. If you get an old fashioned, it has bitters in it. So an old fashioned is basically just bourbon, a little bit of sugar, bitters, and then dilution by stirring it. If you taste bourbon side by side with the old fashioned, you'll be able to taste the bitters and maybe you can do that next time you go out to a bar so you can like know the difference if you're not a bartender or if you like don't know much about cocktails. So yeah, I made a ginseng bitters and I used obviously ginseng, some other Korean herbs that are in my house. I used gochugaru. I wasn't sure how that would turn out, but it makes this soju cocktail I made pop. So if you're in Kentucky and you want to try it, information in the description. Okay, I asked people on social media to do like a little Q&A thing and I got a few questions that I thought were, would be cool to answer on here. And so the first one I got was, how do you, how do you break out of like an artist block or writer's block? I don't... Personally, I personally don't think artist block exists, um, but it just depends. Like for me, I'm not working for any clients when it comes to my solo show, obviously that's just for me. And so anytime I'm feeling not creative or I don't have like a concept for a future painting for the show, I fill up my time with other things like going to the gym or hanging out with friends, playing piano, guitar, anything. I don't try to force a painting because when you force something, you're just gonna, it's gonna come out really shitty. I think it's important to understand that when you are having like an artist block, maybe that is a sign to like get your mind off of art in general and go do something else. That way when you come back, you have a clear mind and clear, 
clear eyes for your next painting session. I think forcing stuff is not the move and nothing good comes out of forcing stuff to happen. What's the most important thing you learned about making frames for my paintings? Well, anytime I do something new, especially when it isn't art, I don't know the steps in which to do it and so I'm pretty chaotic. I was just uh, a bit all over the place. I don't know what the most important thing I learned is other than just like taking my time, making sure my measurements are correct because I don't want to have to ever fix a frame again. Make sure you sand down the wood. I uh, didn't sand down some of the wood frames because I got too excited to put paint on it and so one frame is pretty gritty. Just take your time. <laughs> That's my advice for that. Do you feel supported by other artists in your city? Uh, I think so. I think people that know that I do art are supportive. I don't know what you mean. Like, do they do they share my work on Instagram? Do they buy it myself? No, <laughs> not really. But I, I mean, I don't really care about that shit because, like I said before, my solo show and the concept behind my solo show, it's about my healing and I am not going to let other people's opinions taint that or like even have any influence on me, whether it's good or bad. But I know people that support my art, they know that they, I do art, are supportive of me for sure. Um, I hope that's a good, an good answer. I know for a while I put a lot of stock in the opinions of others. Uh, I put a lot of stock in what people thought about me and you just never, you never know. And also so many people I know are artists are doing their own thing and focusing on their own career that everyone's just hustling and doing their shit. And all I'm concerned with is doing mine. Do you have some advice for people who want to start painting? Just paint. Watch some how-to videos, watch some color theory videos, uh, do lots of studies. I love doing master copies to really learn from the old masters. I think starting out, you shouldn't put too much uh, weight into what you're creating because to be real, your paintings are probably going to be shit for weeks, months, years. It takes a long time, I think, to get good and understand your style, your painting style, what you like to do, your process, your cleanup process. Like it's, there's a lot that goes into it. And a lot of the times it even overwhelms me, even though I've been doing this for like five years now. But my general advice is to just paint and be nice to yourself when you make mistakes. What is your advice for someone who is struggling with patience and taking their time with their artwork? A mistake that I used to make was that I would overwork my paintings a lot. I would be at a good place in my painting where it could probably be done, but I would push it and push it and push it until it was awful. <laughs> and what I've done now, what I do now, is I'll paint for like an hour max. And these are big paintings that I'm working on. So like I can work for an hour without overworking one section of the painting to complete shit. I'll work for an hour max and then I'll step away and just stare at it for like 15, 30 minutes and just like really process what I just did. Or sometimes I'll just like walk away, go outside, go upstairs, do something, get away, and then come back with fresh eyes. Um, that's something that used to frustrate the crap out of me is is overworking a painting and realizing that it should have just been left alone and I don't want to feel that anymore so I'm really good at just painting a little bit and then stepping away and maybe to a fault now because I will paint for like 10 minutes and then I'll step back and be like all right I'm done <laughs> for the night or something or for at least like another hour sometimes I don't even paint I just stare at them for a long time process what I want to do, what I need to fix, what I need to add, and then I'll add it little by little by little. It's way better to do that 
and know that you'll come out with a piece that you'll like than to just than to guess as you're going so that's all i have for this month thank you for watching last month y'all got me 300 more subscribers so if you're here from subscribing last month thank you for supporting me like that was super validating to see and like the views are still going up on that video more than i've ever gotten on anything so i am just so grateful for that and i don't expect that to happen again this month but if it did that'd be cool and it could happen if you like share share to your friends share it to people that you care about to artists that you know or people that want to be artists so thank you so much i'm very very appreciative and i'll see you next month for july's video bye